Hello Saints. This is one of those videos that I really don't want to make. And I pray that by the grace of God, I don't ever have to make one like this again. The only reason I am tackling this issue is because I remember watching Brother Ed Fenninger's um, video where he commented on Robert Breaker's third part in his defending the evil confederacy and it was in Breaker's Breaker said in his video that um, in fact he had the audacity to say that the N word came from the King James Bible and he used Acts 13 verse 1 as his proof text needless to say I was very very angry and so I am making this video to refute that nonsense I could have made it a couple months back but again I was very busy with work and a lot of things I didn't have that much time so but after hearing breakers nonsense I vowed that I make the video publicly calling him out for making that idiotic statement and present the truth to where the n-word come from before I go on I want to say that this is not for the faint of heart if you're extremely sensitive to this issue then it is best that you please stop watch this video and you might want to watch something else but for those who want to hang with me to the very end by the grace and power of God I will be tackling this issue by looking at the Bible text breaker uses as a as proof that the n-word came from there and finally I will be looking at how the n-word became a derogatory racist term as it is today and why nobody should ever use it let's look at the text in scripture where Robert Breaker uses as proof that the n-word is the n-word is biblical Acts chapter 13 and verse 1 and as I said in many of my videos please please follow the example of the Bereans don't take everything I say hook line and sinker you have the responsibility to check the scriptures that we presented in the video I'm fallible I make mistakes but God's Word is infallible and he makes no mistakes so please do follow along in the scripture passages that we presented in the video all right, Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Menane, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Who was Simeon that was called Niger? All we know that he was a teacher in the church of Antioch where he joined in laying of hands on Paul and Barnabas prior to their first missionary journey he is mentioned nowhere else in scripture his surname Niger means black John Gill in his commentary said quote by his first name he appears to be a Jew who by the Romans was called Niger very likely from the blackness of his complexion for that word signifies black Albert Barnes in his commentary wrote quote Niger is a Latin name meaning black why the name was given is not known end of quote the author of the people's New Testament notes wrote quote as Niger means black some have fancied that he was an African but Niger was as common a Roman surname as black is now and finally Easton's Bible dictionary also said that Niger means black and that quote perhaps of his dark complexion a teacher <coughs> excuse me a teacher of some distinction in the church of Antioch it has been supposed that this was the Simon of Cyrene who bore Christ's cross end of quote no matter the information we have about Simeon the most important thing we know 
is that he was a true Bible believing disciple of Jesus Christ who was a teacher in the church at Antioch so now that we know about Simeon who was called Niger then the question has to be asked is this where did the N word come from in the race and history website Pianki Nubiang wrote an article about the original meaning of the N word he explained that the original meaning of the N word had a connotation connected to the gods Nubiang wrote quote the word nigger used to be the most revered and sacred word in the universe it was the divine epithet and the people who began using the mother of all words that originated from this word which which was sullied by the British were the ancient Egyptians or better the Kemites who called their land Kemet or the black land and also used the name Tameri or the beloved land still quoting the father of the n-word was used by the ancient Egyptians for God that word was Enger therefore very few people will realize that the word for God which is Enger was the Egyptian word for God in fact the Egyptian word for nature is also the word used for God that word is nectar and it's spelled n-t-y-r now pronounce the word nigger and the word nectar and one sees the clear connection end of quote Pianki Nubiang went on to explain how the Romans first corrupted the father of the n-word he said quote the Romans are probably the first Europeans to misrepresent the word for God which was Enger and I should I should tell you that it's spelled N G R Enger the Romans had a name for blacks it was Niger and it meant black or people of African origins thus Septimus Niger would have meant Septimus the Negro yet how did the Romans connect the word Niger to black in ancient times blacks were worshipped as gods wow man oh man the gods of Greece came from Egypt the worship of the black Madonna is connected with the worship of Isis the Egyptian goddess moreover blacks in Egypt called their pharaohs Enger he was literally referred to as the god still quoting a Roman general invading Nubia from Egypt would probably have used the Egyptian term for Pharaoh which was Enger God this term then was used to refer to all blacks and as time went by the word Enger became Niger in fact the Romans also classify their emperors as gods to follow the Egyptian style moreover as the history of Ch history channel pointed out Rome was a collection of villages before the Egyptians built it up the word Emperor sounds very close to the word Enger that is not a coincidental connection end of quote over time the word Enger became more corrupted by the Europeans black in Latin as already mentioned is Niger in Italian it is Nero in French it is Negre and in Spanish it is Negro Pianki Nubiang <coughs> excuse me Nubi Pianki Nubiang went on to explain that the English called blacks more or blackamore before they began using the word Negro to refer to blacks and from that word came the racial epithet which we know today as nigger according to the Oxford English Dictionary the first derogatory use of the word nigger was recorded in 1775 and by the early 1800s it was firmly established 
as a derogatory name for black people like myself. In fact, one author in an article said that it was probable that the word nigger is the phonetic spelling of the white southern mispronunciation of the word negro. You know, growing up here in Canada, the Great White North, I praise God that not one time have I ever been, have I ever been called the N-word. I detest that word with every fiber of my being, simply because it is meant to not only put down black people like myself, in reality, it is meant to treat black people as inferior and subhuman out of intense hatred of our skin color. One reason why evolution is so evil and dangerous is the fact that it fuels racial prejudice and bigotry as people believe that black people come from monkeys and apes who can't think for themselves instead of the fact that they're human beings created by a loving, powerful God who can think for themselves. What I don't understand is the double standard as to who can use the n-word. If a black person uses the n-word, that's okay. But if a white person uses the n-word, that's not okay and they're portrayed as racist. The bottom line is that nobody, nobody should ever use the n-word. It is a derogatory term meant to hurt black people and treat them like garbage. If it's not okay for white people to use that disgusting term, then it is certainly not okay for black people to use it among themselves. I will never ever understand why black people use that derogatory word among themselves. I just don't get that. I, I, I've, I have heard some rappers, some black rappers, with all them foul language and they use the n-word in, in their in their rap music it really is disgusting it makes me sick to my stomach they are greatly deceived if they think that by using it it's going to soften the sting no it won't the n-word will always be a racist term meant to offend black people like myself out of sheer hatred of our skin color. The lesson we must learn from looking at the history of the n-word is the fact that words indeed have power. And every one of us, that includes myself, <laughs> believe me, I, I'm guilty, every one of us m must be very careful what we say. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I'm sure many of us when we were kids have heard and uttered, sticks and stones may break the bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, yeah. That's a load of rubbish. Evil, hateful, insensitive words do hurt. It's no wonder, <coughs> excuse me, it's no wonder why James, in his letter, wrote these words concerning the tongue. Please look up at me, James chapter 3, and we'll read the first 12 verses. James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Great to have my online Bible up my alley. James chapter 3. All right. James chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. I have it. I hope you do too. Let's read together. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, 
Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Amen. The fact of the matter is that we can murder someone's reputation with our lies, slander, and gossip. This is the idea that the Son of God made clear in his Sermon on the Mount. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 and verses 21 and 22. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. One of the true marks of a Bible-believing Christian is loving a fellow believer. If we hate a brother or sister in Christ because of skin color, then according to the King James Bible, we are murderers in the heart that haven't been changed by the love of Christ. 1 John chapter 3 and verses 14 and 15. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This is why we need to pray these words of David in Psalm 139 verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And we must also take heed to these words of David's son, Solomon, when he said in Proverbs 4, verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The Son of God, who is also the Son of David, knows exactly what are the issues of life that take place in the human heart. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, <coughs> excuse me, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. As Bible-believing Christians, the day is coming when we will have to give account at the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, let us take heart to these words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church at Ephesus. Please look up with me Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll read from verses 29 to 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. Almost there. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. I have it. I hope you do too. Let's read together. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed 
unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Amen. As Bible-believing Christians, the day is coming. Uh, sorry, before I end this video, sorry, <laughs> I nearly lost my place. Before I end this video, it is very important that I share with you why I totally reject Robert Breaker's notion that the N-word comes from the King James Bible. The reason is twofold. First is the fact that Psalm 12 and verse 6 make is so very clear when it says the words of the Lord are pure words. The English language that we read in the King James Bible was at the height of its purity. And since God is a God of purity, he wanted to have his word translated and preserved into a language that was at the height of its purity. Our English today is degenerate, and it became degenerate over time. And the N-word is a reflection of that since it is a derogatory racist term for black people like myself. The word Niger, which means black, is a pure word and is a com and it is completely non-offensive to black people. Once again, the King James Bible got it absolutely right, and it proves that it's truly the Word of God in the English language. The second, which is really the crux to my argument, is the fact that the King James Bible makes it crystal clear that God is no respecter of persons. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34 Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Romans chapter 2 and verse 11 For there is no respect of persons with God. Racism is a sin according to the scriptures and the N word is a racist term that is offensive to black people. If the N-word was biblical, then it would prove that God himself is a racist, and God wouldn't be God if he sinned. However, the scriptures make it very clear that God is no respecter of persons. We see this in the most well-known verse of the King James Bible. The Gospel of John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, who is God, through his life, death, and resurrection, broke down racial, social, and gender barriers. This is why the Apostle Paul wrote these words in Galatians chapter 3 and verses 26, and 28. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Love that, that scripture. It is absolutely sickening and completely stupid for Robert Breaker to suggest that the N-word comes from the King James Bible, when it is a racist, derogatory term for black people like myself. Our God is a God of purity, and he would never use such derogatory terms like the N-word. Once again, God is no respecter of persons. In conclusion, Robert Breaker is not only wrong, but he's also a foul-mouthed liar. The N-word does not come from the King James Bible. I think it is right that we know nothing more about Simeon, who is called Niger, which means black. Whether or not he was a black man or African doesn't really matter to me. Not by a long shot. What matters to me is the fact that he was a Bible-believing disciple of Jesus Christ. 
the fact that he was <coughs> excuse me the fact that he was there in the church at Antioch praying and fasting with other believers and laying hands on Paul and Barnabas only confirms to me that God truly is no respecter of persons. People like Robert Breaker make an issue of heritage, culture, and skin color out of their cursed pride. It's absolutely ridiculous. We are Bible-believing Christians first. Heritage, color, genealogy, skin color, and nationality are totally irrelevant. Let's not build back up the walls that our Lord has already broken down. If our Father in Heaven is no respect of persons, then we as His children must be the same way. For James chapter 2 and verse 1 says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Amen. Your comments, feedback are always welcome. I love hearing from you and I love interacting with you. However, I will say that if I, if I see any racist, derogatory terms and words, um, it's not three strikes, you're out. It's one and done. The, 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 these, the hateful, racist comments will be deleted and you'll be banned from this channel forever. You, you'll be blocked from this channel forever. I, I have no tolerance for such nonsense. I really hate racism and make, makes me sick. So you're free to comment on my channel, but I will not tolerate any racist, disgusting um, comments from anybody. Thank you for hanging with me to the very end. God bless you all. And until the very until the next video, Lord willing, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.